Antonio starts right now. A man is in the hospital this morning with a gunshot wound to the leg. The latest details on this investigation and how police think the shooting started today at 9. And we hear from a witness of that Christmas parade tragedy in Wisconsin. Why his experience did not end at the parade. That story in your morning headlines with our David Sears. And UTSA's food pantry is keeping students fed during the holiday break. Coming up more on a project providing students with Thanksgiving food. Hi, good morning. Today is November 23rd. And with that live look behind us, we're going to get to Justin Horn in just a minute. But first, we have a big interview with NASA later this morning talking about their mission to deflect an asteroid heading toward Earth. You're not going to want to miss that. That's right. But first, we start with an annual tradition that was canceled last year. It was making its big return this year. The 40th anniversary of the Fort Holiday River Parade. It's getting ready to roll this weekend. We find Mr. Max Massey live downtown at the marina for an exclusive behind the scenes look. Max, how is this year different from years past? Guys, this year is unique to say the least, but before we get to that, take a look at this. The lights are up, the floats are done, Santa's sleigh is filled, NASA has a mission, we have ours, getting people into the holiday spirit. Joined here with Maggie Thompson. So, Maggie, what makes this year unique? Well, hi, Max. Uh, thanks for having me. This year's unique. It's our 40th anniversary, so we've never had a 40th anniversary before. 40 years of magic is our theme, so that's one thing that makes it unique. Each of our floats will be themed per one of the years before. We also have kayaking that will happen before the parade with illuminated kayaks and singers. We also, on some of our floats, we have some different people on our floats. We have the Children's Chorus of San Antonio. We've never had them before. We had the San Antonio Master Singers, never had them before. So we're so excited about having some of these new folks on our floats to entertain the crowds. Do you even have a wedding? We have a wedding, and, and what they'll do is they're going to do the wedding kiss. So they need to wear their chapstick. And they'll do it all along the route, and everybody can join in and kiss their significant other. There yeah. you go. I love that. Uh -huh. Also, I love all the holiday floats. We've seen everything from mm -hmm. a Texas holiday float to Hanukkah. What's the one behind you? Well, the one behind us, that's the Grand Marshal float. Since it's 40 years of magic, our Grand Marshal is Willy Wonka, who is so magical himself. We wish we could have a chocolate river. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> but he will magically turn the lights on uh, the night of the parade. So we're so excited to have him. He's the actor over at the Majestic for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which will be after the the week after the parade. All right, a lot of people excited about this. We are back this year. Yeah. What can they expect? So, want them to go to our website to buy tickets, the San Antonio Riverwalk.com. You can buy tickets there. The weather, the parade weather, it's hitting it right now. We're so excited. Tickets sell out super fast. I would go today. All right, Maggie, thank you so much, guys. We are far from done. We're going to peruse a little bit, take an inside look at all these floats. I want one more shot of the Texas float. It's my favorite one so far. It's pretty fantastic. But again, like I said, far from done. We're going to have much more coming up on the news at noon. Mark, Stephanie, back to you guys. We look forward to it. Thank you, Max. Let's go outside with live cam. It's been a very cold start to our Tuesday, November 23rd. I mean, unbelievably cold out in places like the Texas Hill Country. Here's Justin with more. Yeah, a couple of places did get down to freezing this morning briefly, but they did get there. And here in San Antonio, we dropped into the upper 30s. Coldest temperatures we've seen since early March. It's chilly out there. Still is cool, but not as certainly not as cold as it was this morning. 52 at the airport right now, up to 39 in Kerrville. One of those spots that did get down to freezing this morning. 54 in Rock Springs. And looking at the forecast, uh, quick turkey running across there. 60 degrees on Thursday. That's so. That's still the day we're looking for some changes on Thanksgiving Day. It'll be mainly in the morning that we see some showers and storms and then cooler during the afternoon and windy as well. We'll jump into that forecast a little bit later. Lows this morning, I mentioned the cold stuff, 38 in San Antonio, 37 at Randolph, 37 in Braunfels, Kerrville, Bernie Stage down to freezing or just below, and places like Fredericksburg also dropped down to freezing. Pollen count, mold is low, it's at 240. That's all we have on the board today, and the forecast does get us up to 71 this afternoon. We'll see a switch around on those winds to the south and east. That means humidity is coming back. Some drizzle, some fog tomorrow. We'll break down all of that, plus another look at the Thanksgiving forecast here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look outside with TransGuide, there's a look there at I-35 at South Cross. Things are looking pretty good right now. Here's a little thing we call the 9 at 9.
have new details this morning about the driver allegedly behind the wheel of that SUV that plowed through a Christmas parade in Wisconsin. 38-year-old Daryl Brooks is expected in court today, charged with five counts of first-degree intentional homicide. Police believe he was fleeing a crime when he drove into the Christmas parade. At least 48 people were hurt, including 18 children, 10 of those which are in critical condition. Jury deliberations are expected to begin today in the trial of three men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery. The judge is moving deliberations to an interior room of the courthouse, concerned about jurors hearing protesters outside. Authorities in Bulgaria have launched an investigation into a passenger bus fire that left at least 45 people dead and seven injured. The bus was carrying 52 passengers, 12 of which were children. Authorities say most of the passengers were tourists. The U.S. is coordinating with several countries around the world to release oil from strategic reserves in order to put a cap on rising gas prices. Reuters says the announcement is expected today. As the Senate starts wrangling over the nearly $2 trillion social spending plan passed last week by the House, there's new focus on the climate change part of the plan. It includes a fee on emissions of methane, a potent greenhouse gas, but already criticizing it West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, whose state is a leading producer of coal and natural gas. No more shopping at Target on Thanksgiving. After years of trying to get a jump on Black Friday by opening up on Thanksgiving Day, Target and many other retailers stopped that during the pandemic last year, and Target is making the move permanent, keeping all its stores closed on Thanksgiving. The U.S. Navy is helping with a supply chain backlog in California earlier this month. The White House launched a dashboard to track progress in easing the backlog of imported goods. The White House is also working to relax trucking regulations and persuade ports and railroads to operate around the clock. Sales of previously owned homes up 0.8 percent in October compared to the month before, according to the National Association of Realtors. That put home sales at the fastest pace since January. With just days until Thanksgiving, the White House Christmas transformation is officially underway. First Lady Jill Biden greeted the horse and buggy carrying the presidential Christmas tree yesterday. The tree will be placed in the Blue Room, and that's today's 9 o'clock. UTSA students will have a hot meal this Thanksgiving holiday thanks to the assistance of the campus's resource room. UTSA's Whataburger Resource Room is bringing back its Thanksgiving in a bag initiative and a project that provides students with food bags. Tiffany Huertas joins us live from the food pantry at UTSA with more. Tiffany, what will students get inside these food bags? Good morning. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here at the resource room. There's so many different items. They've made about 350 so far to distribute to students here at UTSA. Just check it out. This is what they'll have inside. They'll have gravy, mashed potatoes, green beans, and so much more. And to talk a little bit more about this initiative is Taylor Cole, a graduate assistant of the Waterburger Resource Room. Good morning, and thank you for Good joining morning. us. Yeah, of course. Uh, talk to us about this initiative. When did it start? So this started in 2017. This was a vision from UTSA students, faculty, and staff to address some of the concerns and barriers that can prevent students from being successful, um, food insecurity being one of those. And this resource room, what does it mean for students? So this resource room for students is, again, an opportunity for students to get some of those resources that can prevent them from being successful both inside and outside of the classroom. Um, some of those resources include food, um, as well as like SNAP benefits and other things that students might need, um, again, to help them be successful and overcome those struggles that can prevent that and take away their focus from school. This holiday season, the community here at UTSA came together to make these bags to give out to students. Talk to me about that. How did it all unfold? So it was supposed to be a two hour event, ended up being a little shy of an hour because we had a huge turnout of volunteers and members of the UTSA community, including football players, um, come out and help us bag these Thanksgiving meals last week. What are students telling you about these bags? Students are so grateful for these bags. Um, not only is it food meant to sustain them through the holidays when we're closed at the end of the week, but it's also just a nice little pick-me-up and gesture of 
love from the UTSA community, I think, to um, receive a Thanksgiving bag um, with all the little Thanksgiving goodies as well as a little card, um, again, to spread the love this holiday season. I love that. It's all about love this holiday season. Do we still have time to tell students to pass by today? Most definitely. We are going to be open today from 12 to 4 and tomorrow from 12 to 4 as well. So students can stop on by, do their shopping for the week, and then also pick up a Thanksgiving bag. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time this yeah. morning. And isn't this so cool? Like, just check this out. Like, you have cereal, you have applesauce, corn, peas. I mean, everything you want. They have it here at the resource room. Back to you guys in the studio. Lots to be thankful for out there at UTSA, especially this year. Tiffany Huertas, live. Thank you. Thank you. Time now, 9.08 and about 50 degrees out there now. Still ahead, we introduce you to Spike and Spicy, why these two reindeer are so special. Next in your morning headlines with our David Sears. Also later, the Public Theater of San Antonio ringing in the Christmas season with the new original musical. We'll take you backstage for a sneak peek at what to expect. And make sure you stick around for our next half hour. This is a live look from the International Space Station uh, in orbit. Crews preparing uh, by the way, NASA is preparing to launch a rocket into space that is supposed to blow up asteroids headed towards Earth. Details on how all of that will work coming up in a live interview in this newscast. In your morning headlines, we will show you where the vehicle driven through that Wisconsin parade route ended up and a ferry capsizes. A Christmas parade in Brazil is shuttered when a sidewalk collapses and Santa has a few more reindeer to choose from this upcoming Christmas season. Let's say good morning to David Sears. Very rare episode with reindeer in Alaska. Can't wait to see it. We'll have it for you in just a second, but first let's start with this. Another twist of that Christmas parade that turned deadly over the weekend in Wisconsin. You're looking at the red SUV driven by the suspect Daryl E. Brooks through the parade route. The vehicle ended up in a yard next door to the Richard Lux house. The Lux family was at the parade when the suspect drove through at a high rate of speed, killing five, injuring over 40. Fortunately, no one in the Lux family was hurt, but Richard was right there as the SUV went by. Then when he got home, he noticed the red SUV in the neighbor's yard. You can see some of the damage on the side panel. We'll show you in just a second. You can also see the tread marks on the yard. Richard says he has never seen the SUV at his neighbor's house or anywhere else. We had some friends getting ready to leave and then noticed that this car here had uh, damage on the side. So the vehicle actually went through our parking lot across the yard right there to the back side of the uh, uh, that adjacent house and that's where it was found by the police. It's a little bit difficult to process, you know, just especially how fast everything went when it was when we were downtown. You know, with you think in hindsight about what response you could have to stop the guy and it's just, you know, even even if I was right in front of it, it would have been hard to stop it. I uh, would ask for, you know, prayer for Waukesha. There's a lot of hurting hearts around here and uh, we'll get through it. Brooks scheduled to make an appearance in court today. He's expected to be charged with five counts of intentional homicide. You are looking at some still photos of a ferry that capsized. It happened in Sri Lanka. At least six people were killed. Four children were among the dead. Twelve people were rescued. The search for more survivors continues. Accidents like this have become more rare in Sri Lanka because so many bridges connecting locations have been built. But this bridge connecting two towns was closed for repairs. That's why people took the ferry. More still pictures, this is from Brazil. You're looking at what is left of the section of a sidewalk after it just collapsed. It happened during a Christmas celebration. 33 people were injured. A dozen fell into the river right next to it. 21 adults, 12 children ended up in local hospitals. Good news, none were seriously injured. And finally this morning, meet Spike and Spicy. They are rare twin reindeer. The two were born in the Williams Reindeer Farm in Alaska. The Williams have been raising reindeer for 30 years. These two are now six months old. The two were separated at birth because one of them had to be bottle fed. Lauren Waite actually saw the birth of the two and at the time was a little concerned. She was a really tame cow, so she let us be right close to her while she was in labor. And we watched the baby pop out, and as soon as the first one came out, I saw that there were two more feet hanging out of her bottom. And I panicked because I was like, oh no, this means twins. And for us, historically, twins have not always survived. Well, so far, so good. The two have actually been reunited in the same pen. They seek each other out. They eat off the same hay bale. They play with each other. You can go by and say hi if you'd like. They give tours. I'm not sure when Santa shows up, though. 
or if the two little ones even have red noses, but I'm sure yeah. as twins, they could find their self on Christmas Eve. So there's Dasher and Dancer and Spike and, Spike and Spicy. It, yeah. <laughs> Spike and Spicy, so a little, little, little add to the, yeah. to the fun. Well, they came into the world at the right spot, that much closer to the North Pole, right? Mm -hmm. How far does Santa have to go to find reindeer? Right Not there. that far, gotta apparently. Keep close. Right there in the backyard. So, but now I guess they got to play some reindeer games first. They do. Ah. Yes, they do. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thanks, David. Thanks, David. <laughs> it's 16, 51 degrees. Yeah. Far cry from where we were earlier this morning. One of the coolest mornings, Justin, you said, around here since early March? March 3rd. Oh, wow. March 3rd. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, uh, it definitely cooled off. We saw that some of the cloud cover that we had yesterday just move out. And clear skies, light winds. That, uh, that does the trick. Let's take a look at the numbers this morning. 38 here in San Antonio, 32 Bernie Stage. We did get down the freezing there. 31 Kerrville. I believe Comfort also touched freezing this morning. And then zooming out, places like Fredericksburg, just below freezing. It was a brief light freeze, but a freeze nonetheless. 39 in Uvalde, 41 the low this morning in Eagle Pass. Here's a look at the time lapse. It was a beautiful sunrise with those clear skies. And boy, is it warming up quickly. We're already up to 52 now here in San Antonio. So we're turning the corner very quickly. It looks like we've got some serious clouds trying to return to the sky. We'll see some off and on thin high clouds today. Mostly sunny, though, I think most of the afternoon. Dew point is at 39. The air's still dry, by the way. That changes, and I'll show you that here in just a second. Uh, 40 right now in Comfort, 51 at Rio Medina, 55 stints in 53 in New Braunfels. And there's still some 30s as you get up towards Junction. It'll warm up there. We'll see all these numbers drift into the 60s and eventually uh, some low 70s today, I think. 71 here in San Antonio. 60s Kerrville uh, over to Rock Springs, but some mid 70s as you get down to the south around Catula. Tomorrow morning, not near as cold, and that's due in large part to moisture returning. We'll only get into, uh, drop into the mid 50s. And you look at the dew point forecast over the next 30 hours. Yes, very dry today. Dew points in the 20s and 30s, but by tomorrow morning, the dew point gets all the way back up into the low 60s. So very quick moisture return tonight. That'll lead to some fog and drizzle tomorrow morning. So it could be a little bit damp to start your Wednesday. Just a heads up. Then we turn our attention to our next storm system, which, by the way, is up across the Pacific Northwest right now. But we'll make it down into Texas by Thanksgiving. All in all, though, if you're talking about travel here across the country, this is about as good as it gets here in November. Not a lot, really. That should interrupt air travel today other than just a lot of people traveling. A little bit of lake effect snow up across the northeast and some snow in the Rocky Mountains. And we are looking at airport delays. Nothing there. It all looks good right now. So here's our forecast going forward. The storm system gets a little closer by tomorrow morning. Again, we're in the cloud cover most of tomorrow. And then by 6 p.m. tomorrow evening, that front starting to make it into the Texas Panhandle. Once it runs into some moisture, that's when we start to get some showers. And I think we're going to see a few storms with this as well. A broken line of showers and storms moving through. This is Thursday 9 a.m. So we're talking morning time here on your Thanksgiving Day. By noontime, the showers and storms are pushing south. I think the rain ends here in San Antonio. Clouds probably stick around but it won't be as wet. This is around 7 p.m. Shows a few showers out here. I really don't think that's likely. I think all the rain is south of us by this point, and we're just looking at mostly cloudy skies. There could even be a little bit of clearing late in the day on Thursday, but temperatures will be falling behind that front. How much rain will we get? These are estimates, but around an inch closer to the coast, maybe a tenth of an inch up to half an inch here around San Antonio. Keep in mind, this is going to be quick moving, so we're not going to have a lot of time to get decent uh, rainfall totals. So 62 Thanksgiving morning, it turns windy, 60% chance of rain during the afternoon, breezy, we'll call it mostly cloudy. There could be a few peaks of sun. Temperatures actually fall down close to 60, maybe even the 50s in parts of the hill country. So 73 tomorrow, there's that transition day there on Thursday. 60 Friday, still kind of cool, partly cloudy. And on Saturday, we'll have another chance for rain, some showers, cloudy skies, 57, 66 on Sunday, and then we're back into the 70s by next week, guys. Wow, lots going on. Yeah, a range of temperatures, or like a plate. There you go. <laughs> there you go. A little bit of everything. A full plate. That's how I like my plate. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Justin. You got it. 920, about 53 degrees.
and still ahead on GMSA at 9. We're taking you backstage for a new original Christmas musical coming to the Public Theater of San Antonio. The Public Theater of San Antonio is ringing in the Christmas season with the new original musicals, uh, musical rather, Seasons Greetings from San Antonio. Priscilla Caraman gives us a preview backstage. The Public Theater of San Antonio is welcoming back audiences for its second post-pandemic show, and this one is centered all around San Antonio. Traditionally, at the Public Theater, we produce musicals that have been produced before, and this time we have created our own musical review and sort of created a story built around it, all centered in San Antonio. This show is so relatable, and it's a good show for family as well, and if you are looking for something to put you in the holiday spirit, this show will give you some traditional music, but also some new pop songs. But also this is an excellent show for folks that have never come to the public theater here at the San Pedro Playhouse, because this is a historic theater in San Antonio. It is the oldest theater here. This used to be nationally known as one of the centers of theater in the country. I'm talking over a hundred years ago. Season's Greetings is our 700th production in this space. So if there's any show to come to, it's this show, especially because we really connected it to the city and to the community. Seasons Greetings opens November 19th through December 19th and you can find more information on KSAT.com. Priscilla Caraman, KSAT 12 News. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. A look at some of the top stories we're following this morning including two shootings, one of which was deadly. What we know so far after the break. And Black Friday deals are already underway. We'll show you some of the best deals happening this year. And a live look from space thanks to NASA as they prepare for a first of its kind mission, something straight out of a science fiction movie, blowing up, blowing up an asteroid headed directly towards Earth, generally speaking. Details on the mission ahead in a live interview with NASA. And welcome back. It's about 930. Top stories we are following today. We are waiting to learn more information about a deadly overnight shooting. It happened on the city's far west side. What we've learned so far is that the man shot and killed was 67 year old Daniel Sales. Shooting happened at a home on Cub Path. That's in an area near Petranco in 1604, just inside the loop. Details about how it'll happen, though, are, are few. Uh, police did say they have a person in custody, though. San Antonio police trying to find a man they say shot another person in the leg last night on the city's north side. It happened around 9 o'clock at an apartment complex on West Rampart between San Pedro and McCullough Avenue. Police say a 21-year-old man was shot in the leg. He was taken to the hospital in stable condition. The 19-year-old suspect ran away from the scene and at last report has not been found. Police did not give a detailed description of that suspect and right now they have not provided details on what led up to that shooting. A woman accused of cutting her boyfriend is now being charged with aggravated assaults. This is 59-year-old Margie Olveda. According to the arrest affidavit, Olveda and her boyfriend had just gotten home from dinner and drinks, and Olveda began accusing her boyfriend of cheating on her. And according to the affidavit, while her boyfriend was sitting down, Olveda allegedly went to the kitchen, grabbed a knife, and started attacking him. The man had several cuts to his face, arms, and hands. He was able to leave and was eventually taken to a hospital for treatment. Olveda was arrested and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And the trend of Black Friday deals continues to move further and further away from actual Black Friday. Turns out many of the deals were posted online overnight. ABC's Ariel Rochef goes down the list. The clock is ticking down to Black Friday, but the deals are already up for grabs. At Target, this KitchenAid stand mixer normally goes for $430, but now it's $220. This Apple Watch, which normally retails for $280, is on sale at Best Buy for $220. And at Kohl's, this Roomba vacuum, originally $375, now on sale for $190, plus an additional 15% off at checkout. Experts predict consumers will spend about $998 on average on gifts this year, about 13% more than last year. Big box retailers are already in set for supply chain issues. Small mom and pop retailers, not so much. But unlike years past, experts say holding out for better deals isn't always the best move. 
the demand is going to increase for product as we get closer to the holiday. So when there's short supply of product and demand increases, the price increases. And a growing list of big box retailers are giving their employees the day off on Thanksgiving. Target announcing today that it will close for the holiday, joining Trader Joe's, Walmart, and Aldi. Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. And to other news now, since Thanksgiving is on Thursday, if you get your trash picked up that day, it will be picked up a day earlier this week due to the holiday. And Wednesday and Thursday, collections for recycling organics and garbage will be collected tomorrow. There will be no garbage pickup on Thursday. If you get your recycling and garbage picked up on Friday, there's no change to your schedule. Outside with live cam after a very cold morning here in South Texas. Justin's back with more on our Tuesday and our Thanksgiving forecast. Yeah, we got down to 38 this morning. We're already rebounding pretty quickly, though, now into the low 50s. Let's look at a little bit of Thanksgiving climatology. We showed this some yesterday this morning, but it's worth showing again. Uh, here's some of the extremes here for Thanksgiving in San Antonio. Did get down to 25 back in 1975. So this is the time of year where we could see some cold temperatures, but that's not in the forecast. In 2000, we got 1.39 inches of rain. We are expecting some rain uh, for this Thanksgiving, but not that much. So we'll probably stay below that threshold. The warmest Thanksgiving, 1973 and 2010, we got up to 83. That's also not the forecast. We're expecting to be in the 60s with a little bit of rain Thanksgiving morning. So no extremes this year. There's a look at the satellite and radar. Some rain well off to our west into parts of Arizona. Upper level low. That'll be getting a little bit closer to Texas in the coming days. That will also uh, kind of combine with a frontal boundary to give us a little bit of, of, of those rain chances I mentioned Thanksgiving morning. And then again on Saturday. Temperature-wise, 49 Waco, 56 Abilene, 40 in Lubbock, 49 right now in Midland. So it was chilly across the state. But again, it uh, should turn into a pretty nice day. 71 this afternoon, mostly sunny. Southeasterly winds will kick in later today, 5 to 10 miles per hour. That brings about changes for tomorrow and uh, some drizzle, some fog tomorrow morning. We'll break down that forecast and look ahead to the weekend, too, coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you very much, Justin. We have something major going on right now with multiple units on the scene and it uh, looks like at least one wrecker 1604. Hang on, let me get a bit better close up look at this right now. Um, you're seeing what I'm seeing right now, but we've got everything slowed to a crawl. Looks like the frontage road 1604 Highway 151 area right now. They have one of those giant King Kong wreckers out there right now. And I see at least one hero truck. Not sure the situation. We'll try to get some more information on what's going on right now. But this has got, again, traffic to a standstill. Frontage Road, 1604-151 area. And there are two opportunities today to get your COVID vaccine or flu shot for you or your child. Today, Metro Health will have a pop-up clinic at the Divine Providence Church on Old Pearsall Road from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There will also be a pop-up clinic at the Children's Rehabilitation Institute on Quarry Park. That's near Wurzbach Parkway and Hero Stadium. All three COVID vaccines will be available at both clinics as well as flu shots. They will also offer the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. And party season is on as the holidays approach. Office parties, weddings, and nonprofit fundraisers are back on. Wedding planners say their phones are ringing off the hook with last minute events. So Patty Santos tells us why you can't always get what you want. Our vendors are so strapped. Our resources are so minimal, budgets are lower, timelines are shorter. 22 years into event planning and Jamie Cook has had to reimagine her event planning strategy and execution. Everything has changed the way you build a budget, your planning timeline. Nothing is the way it was before the pandemic. She says clients have to know that too. Like so many industries, prices have gone up for us too. Staffing has gone down for us too. Inventory has gone down. Supply chain issues are happening to us too. And I think that people do not realize that in the hospitality realm, in our universe, it is devastating. Megan Oropesa knows firsthand planning the perfect wedding was hard. My dress took a lot longer than normal because it had to be shipped in from Australia. And then having the alterations done, things like that that would normally take, you know, six weeks were taking longer. Even her wedding date stayed flexible. And so did you have to reschedule? We did twice. 
<laughs> so this was the third time's a charm. Each time checking with vendor schedules, but in the end, keeping perspective on what mattered. All the stress that I went through, that we've gone through, was nothing. You know, once we got to that actual altar and actually had our, our vows exchanged. Cook warns corporations and families returning to holiday parties, celebrations and fundraisers to plan with patience. I can promise you it's usually showing up late, it's showing up broken or it's not showing up at all. So we've got to have something, you know, in our back pocket. That was Patty Santos reporting. By the way, that traffic incident is on the main lanes out there at 1604 near 151. We'll try to pop that Transguide camera back up for you coming up. For all the artists out there, you can now submit your work for the 7th Annual Citywide Art Contest remembering the late Martin Luther King Jr. Any art select will be featured as a visual art or rather representation for the 35th Annual MLK March and Legacy Celebration. This year's theme, free to be. Anybody who lives in Bear County can participate just email arts at sanantonio.gov the subject line should say 2022 mlk poster contest yeah through december 8th to submit your work for more details on the guidelines for those posters head on over to our website at ksat.com and the time right now it's 9 38 and it's 53 degrees out there you're watching gmsa at nine after the break how nasa plans to deflect an asteroid expected to fly very close to earth details on this interesting mission next in a live interview Hey, welcome back. It's 941. Taking a look at that wreck. It's at 1604 North at uh, 151 there. You can see the traffic still onto one lane right now. So be careful if you're headed in that direction. We don't have any details yet, but it's right there. One of those ramps from 151 to the main lanes of 1604 itself. Hoping to clear this up pretty soon right now. Traffic is being diverted onto that kind of right shoulder and around that incident, whatever it is. It, you can see the sun is shining bright out there uh, and we're at 53 degrees. It's a, quite a change from the 40s that we started with this morning. Very chilly this morning and uh, Justin says it's actually jumped up higher than 53, correct? Yeah, it looks like the intermediate temperature there is already up to like 57. Mm -hmm. So we're already gaining like 20 degrees here from our morning low. It's, it's going to be a quick warm up today. We have almost full sun out there. Just a few serious clouds. It's going to be a nice afternoon. Very quickly though, let's talk rainfall. We are expecting some during the day on Thanksgiving, at least the morning portion of the day. And uh, let's check in where we are for the year. 32.87, that's about three inches above average. We built up a nice little surplus there in the fall. So far this fall, we're doing okay. We may add to it. And it looks like we may end the year, depending on how December plays out, pretty close to average. Del Rio is at 16.01. They're about three inches below average. Austin has been doing well all year long when it comes to rainfall. Rain chances here over the next week or so. Very small chance tomorrow. I think it's mainly in the form of some drizzle, maybe a few showers late, and then a 60% chance of showers and storms early Thursday morning. Another chance on Saturday with some light showers. So we'll have some opportunities here to add to the rainfall total for the year, but not today. Mostly clear skies and very comfortable weather right now. 52 officially at the airport. Calm winds. Dew point is still low at 39. We detect some of those very thin cirrus clouds coming through, and that's about all we're going to see today. 54 Castroville, 55 right now, Bernie Stage, 58 in Uvalde, still 46 in Kerrville. That's a spot that did drop down to freezing this morning. The forecast for today takes us up to about 71. We'll call for mostly sunny skies. Sunsets around 536, and tonight temperatures will not be as chilly. Uh, that's because we'll have moisture surging in, and that will keep temperatures up overnight, probably mid 50s tomorrow morning. That's as cool as we'll get. And you see the dew point steadily climbing. So it's dry today, but overnight that moisture surges back in. And typically when that happens, you see some fog and drizzle. So we're going to put that in forecast tomorrow morning. It'll feel more humid on your Wednesday, and it will be quite a bit more cloudy. Uh, the active weather across the country is really only here out west. We've got an upper level low that's producing some showers across parts of Arizona. Then you got some snow in the higher elevations up across the Pacific Northwest. Some of that energy will eventually make its way down into Texas in the form of a cold front, which is scheduled for Thursday morning. So let's time it out here. Uh, this is tomorrow morning. Clouds surge back into Texas. It'll be mostly cloudy for most of the day on Wednesday. As far as rain goes, we're not looking for much. There could be a little bit of drizzle tomorrow morning and then maybe a shower to Wednesday evening. By the time we get into Thursday morning, though, this is around nine o'clock. Here comes our front, a bro broken line of showers and storms. 
and I think there could be some pockets of heavy rain mixed in there, but this is going to be pretty quick moving. So we're not going to get a ton of rain out of this. And by midday, the rain is pushing south and away from San Antonio. So I think rain ends by the, the lunch hour. And then it, this shows a few showers by the evening. But I think really it's just going to be cloudy Thursday evening and breezy. I mentioned some of the rain potential there rather than an inch closer to the coast here in San Antonio, a tenth of an inch to about a half an inch. A 60% chance of rain in the morning, then mostly cloudy in the afternoon for Thanksgiving Day. Temperatures may fall a bit. Another chance of rain shows up on Saturday, 57 with a 40% chance of showers, 66 Sunday, and then 70 on Monday, guys. Thank you, Justin. We're going to bring Justin back in in one moment. Unlike Hollywood sci-fi movies, we've rarely had to deal with incoming asteroids on Earth, but NASA is taking no chances. So later this evening, tomorrow or tomorrow, NASA will launch the Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART. The first of its kind, DART will test the idea of deflecting an asteroid by colliding with a small moonlet in a double asteroid system. You know, to tell us more about the mission is NASA expert Olivier Barnwood. Good morning, Olivier. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Oh, of course. Absolutely. It's our pleasure. First, can you briefly explain uh, a little bit more about what this DART mission entails? Right. So the idea is to demonstrate that we can deflect an asteroid, as your as your colleague just said. Um, we're going to be launching tonight and spe uh, making DART uh, hit the, the moonlet, the secondary of, uh, of the Dinamo system at about six kilometers per second, which is uh, miles per hour. It's very fast um, and it'll displace, uh, slightly nudge that moon. It's fascinating stuff. And uh, since DART is going to try to redirect an asteroid, why is it colliding with the little moonlet instead of the larger asteroid itself? That's a very good question. Um, the main reason is because it's easier to measure how much we're going to be displacing the moon, or how much we're going to be moving it by. Uh, we're going to be using primarily Earth-based uh, telescopes to observe the system after we've impacted it. Um, and, and that will allow us to see a change. The telescopes will allow us to see a change in the orbit of that moonlet, uh, which is much easier to measure than if this moonlet were going around the sun. Uh, the displacements are much harder to measure uh, when you're going around the sun, uh, it's much easier and more evident uh, when you're using the moonlet going around Didymos. And for those who are worried, what is the likelihood of an asteroid being a big enough danger to Earth that we would need to use this technology to avoid a huge natural disaster? It's very unlikely that we would have to worry about it, but it is something that, you know, the object that we're trying to move, it's about 150 meters, about a football field size object. Um, that kind of object, if it were to come, uh, let's say, on El Paso, for example, could, or, or San Antonio, would destroy that city. And so we would want to be able to do something about it. You know, we, we are capable. We have the technology to move these things. Uh, so let's do something about it. And that's what the purpose of this test is, to demonstrate that we can actually do something. And I think you touched on this earlier, but how fast will the DART spacecraft be traveling? Yeah, so I said about six kilometers per second, uh, uh, which is on the order of a thousand or 150 miles uh, per, uh, you know, it's fairly fast. Um, a lot faster than when you're driving your car at, for example, um, and that's the speed. All right, Olivier, final question. Uh, when all is all of this going to happen central time here in the U.S.? And where can our viewers go to learn right. more about the mission itself? In Central Time, the launch is around 11.45 uh, p.m. tonight. Um, you may be able to see it. It's uh, being launched from Southern California, uh, from your area. Um, but uh, you can definitely watch it on nasa.gov slash DART. And also, uh, you can follow a lot of the activities that we're doing here at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab, which is the institution that built the start, uh, DART spacecraft. So you can, uh, you can come to our website as well. All right, Olivier, thank you for your time this morning. Yeah, thank you. Take care, Olivier. Olivier Barnwin, NASA expert, talking about the upcoming DART mission tonight. Godspeed to the mission. Right now, it is 949, about 54 degrees. And we'll be right back. Uh, Spurs, last night, <laughs> Phoenix Suns. Wow. Did you guys know that uh, after the Minnesota game last week, 
that the Spurs had a, like a, one of those player-only meetings lasted like 30, 40 minutes. Did Ooh. you know that? No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. You know what his pot right. reaction was when he was asked about it? Uh-huh. What's that? Dandy. <laughs> dandy? <laughs> dandy. I think, okay. was, I think that was the word he used was dandy. This is last night against the Suns. Hey, the Spurs started out, had a lead. We're hanging right in there with Phoenix, and all of a sudden the second quarter comes around, and Phoenix starts bombing away from three-point range, and the Spurs would come down, take a quick shot, and miss. And they shot 50 3% from the field last night. Think about that. 53%, but they only shot 25% from three-point range. And they only took 20 threes. I mean, everybody else is taking 30, 40, and 50 threes. The Spurs are hanging in there at 20. I mean, it's just apparently the player meeting didn't work out as well as they had hoped so far. Now, it was the Phoenix Suns. They're like one of the top teams in the West, so you would expect it to be a, a tough game for the Spurs. But still... I mean, Devin Vassell had another great game. That kid's really coming on. He's looking, he's looking pretty sharp. This was like 13 in a row for the Suns last night. Yeah. On a huge streak. And the Spurs are no now idea. like 4 and 12 or something. Yeah. Like that. yeah it's no, not... the Sun, you didn't know that? Yeah, the Suns, uh, are, the Suns are hot. They're one of the best <laughs> the Suns in are on the West. Fire. So it's off of the case. We can't stay up and watch it due to our shift. Right. Did you guys get a chance to watch any of this game last I night? Watched, no. I watched a chunk of it, and it's, it looks like – all the other game, all the other game. They they play three quarters, okay. and they don't. They they start making some some like yesterday. I, if I'm not mistaken, it was like 48, 41. Mm-hmm. Spurs get the ball. It's a fast break. One guy is behind three sons, and they throw it over his head out of bounds. Okay. So you don't get the two there. They come back the other way and get two. So there's a four point swing right there. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you're talking 48, 41, and it's it's 48, 45, and you're down three instead of now it's you know. May I ask a question purely right. as a fan? Uh-huh. Just play. Is is it due to a lack of veteran leadership on uh. this team? Uh, yeah, we've been. I mean, RJ and I've been talking about that for for a long time. And you know, Thaddeus Young is even starting to step up and and start start to do some uh, verbal inspiration, if you want to call it that. I mean, he's, he's start, well, he's starting to talk. He's starting to talk. Hey, we, you know, we got to we got to have some heart. We got to start making quit making so many mistakes. We got to start playing like a, like a team. And so he's he's kind of stepping up, and that's that's a good thing because he's the oldest guy on the team. He's they've, the guy that's been around the longest. They've been in every game. That's the frustrating and that's, part. Yeah. yeah. But it's always but like I say, it's always two or three plays, mm-hmm. three or four minutes, a quarter here and a quarter there, and you know, just it's like they're right there, and then all of a sudden. I, I, don't, I don't want to say stupidity or ignorance or just bad. Something bad happens in their head and they throw a ball away. Well, or next something up, like that. the Hawks so tomorrow your, night, uh, yeah. AT&T Center, Thanksgiving Eve. Oh. Remember, they're on a four-game homestand. Right. Mm-hmm. So they, they, need to get, they need to get some wins. You can't be wasting these home games. Well, you'd like to think they could write the ship at home, right? You we would hope. Think. You would hope. Okay. What a but Thanksgiving miracle? Let's maybe? see. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Well, at least it's before they eat turkey. That's yeah. right. All right. Thank you, David. A quick look right now. Looks like uh, the main lanes of 1604 are closed at 150 right now as they continue to clear this incident.